this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with the Shadow Catcher plugin, as well as work with what is output from your Cinema 4D rendering so that you can do color correction separately for the shadow and the object inside of a compositor like After Effects. Okay, so I've just got a little scene set up here for you with a background, this plane, and a little 3D object that I wanna composite into this shot. Now I'm gonna turn off the visibility of the plane for a moment, just so you can see what this looks like with no shadows. And as you can see, it's pretty rough. Um, it just doesn't feel very integrated right now. Now, a lot of times you're gonna need to do something like this, where you need to composite a 3D rendered object over a 2D footage background. Now this is gonna present issues for you and for your shadow because you can't have geometry in your shot to catch the shadow without rendering the geometry. Now there's little ways that you can kind of work around that but all of it is a workaround. And this I find is the fastest way to fix this issue of being able to have your shadow not have the um, geometry showing up. So once you get your plugin installed, it is the Shadow Catcher plugin and it is provided on the website Graphics Flow. If you just do a search for Shadow Catcher Cinema 4D, it's going to be one of the first things that comes up. Um, so you'll be able to install that plugin. You'll need to quit Cinema 4D and then open it back up. Now, you won't want to go looking in your plugins folder because it's not going to be located there. It's actually going to be applied through our material that we have for the plane. So you can see um, if I turn on this little plane here that I have for catching my shadow, I'm also going to turn on my interactive render region. That way you can see the shadow that I have set up with my light. So pretty basic stuff, but again, if I went in and tried to add some sort of compositing tag or something to this, it's just really difficult to get this shadow isolated. So we want to be able to use that Shadow Catcher plugin and I'm gonna do it now through my materials. So first I wanna start by creating a new material. Then I'm gonna double click this material to open it. And the first thing I wanna do is uncheck all these default checks that just come on when you first create a new material. And then we're gonna check on our alpha. And with alpha selected, you wanna come over here to texture. And whenever I click this dropdown, I'm, I'm actually gonna pull this up so you can see. When I click this dropdown, Shadow Catcher is located at the very bottom. Now you'll only see this if you have installed the plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And you'll notice you don't really get any change yet. And there is one crucial step that you have to follow, which is click the invert button. And then this becomes transparent. And now we have a perfect material to use on this plane so that we can capture the shadow. So I'm going to X out of that material editor and drop this material onto my plane. And now you can see that magically that plane disappears and I still get my shadow on the ground. However, you can also see that this shadow looks black and this looks pretty dark while the background and the blacks in the shot look very blue. So now if I want to do color correction, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble because right now this shadow will be output with the RGBA of um, this little guy right here. So I'm, it's really not helping me if I want to um, render this just right now. So I need to go in and begin setting up my render settings to accommodate for the fact that I need to do some color correction of the object, some color correction of the shadow, and I want to do it independently of these two things. So let's go into our render settings. I'm going to go to render, edit render settings. And the first thing that I want to do is come up here to my save and my multi-pass. So I'm going to check on save. And I'm also going to check on multi-pass because we're going to use that in a moment. Now I'm going to tell this where I want this to save. So I'll just go ahead and hit my browse button. 
And I've just created a little folder to save this to. So we will just call this um, shot one and hit save. And I want to make sure that I say I'm going to render an alpha channel. So check that on. That's very important or you're not going to get the right result here. Okay, so we're also going to be saving a multi-pass image while we're here. Let's just go ahead and define that. And we'll just call this buffer one. Now I'm calling it buffer one because we need to set up an object buffer for this to work properly. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to X out of my render settings and to add my object buffer, I basically want to create a mat of this object so that I can take the whole render that comes out right here, the object and the shadow, and then cut the object out of it using an alpha that only contains the ship and not the little um, shadow here. So I can do that and create an object buffer for that ship by adding a compositing tag. So I'm gonna select my ship here, go to tags, Cinema 4D tags and choose compositing. Then I'm gonna come over to my object buffer tab. Make sure you're in the attributes tab here. And we're just gonna enable buffer one. Perfect. Now let's go back to our render settings. I'll go to render, edit render settings. And in my multi-pass, I wanna make sure that I have an object buffer. So I'll need to go to multi-pass and choose object buffer here. Now it's automatically going to have that set up as group ID one and we enabled buffer one. So those will match. Perfect. So now we have that save set up for both our um, regular image here just for our shot and for our object buffer. Now I also want to just come in here really quickly and make sure that this is set to TIFF PSD layers instead of a PSD just to keep my file size down um, just because by default that would be something else. So perfect my render settings look good. Now what I'm going to do is render to my picture viewer just to check this out. So I'm going to hit shift R and you can see what I get here. So I'm going to select this and go over to layer and choose single pass. And now I basically can see what this looks like with my background and these guys together, the shadow and the object. And I can also see my alpha. Now we see we got a little bit of a problem and my object buffer. My object buffer looks correct. Now what's happening is because I still have that background image set up here with no compositing tag or anything, that's going into my render. So I can do a couple things here. I can come into this background image there and I can delete it because I really don't need it for my render or I can add a compositing tag. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna select the background. It was really just there so you could see that disappearing once we added that material. I'm just gonna select it and delete it. So now we get this kind of an image, not as easy to tell that a shadow is being cast because we don't have anything to see it um, on top of. So we'll just turn off the interactive render region and let's jump back over to our render view. So the picture view, I'll hit shift R again and I am going to overwrite these. So I'll go ahead and hit yes. And we can see the passes that are being output now. We've got the background yet again, which is going to not contain our main background. We've got our alpha, perfect. You can see that contains both of these. So that'll all be cut out in a moment. And then we've got our object buffer. That looks great. So now what I wanna do is pull up After Effects and bring in those passes. So we'll just do that quickly. Okay, so I have After Effects pulled up. I already pulled just my backdrop JPEG image in over here. 
I'm also going to grab the two things that we just output. Now, it looked like three passes when we were looking at this in Cinema 4D, but because I didn't check on the box to separate my alpha in my render settings, my alpha channel is contained within shot one. So I have the RGB and A information all contained here. And you'll be able to see when we import this what we need to do with that. So I brought those in and we need to make sure that that shot one is going to be pre-multiplied. Now by default, if I just drag it in, it is pre-multiplied. But if you went through the project panel here and right clicked and chose import file, you would be given the dialog for how you want to treat that. So if you wanna change it later, I'll just show you how you can go in um, or if you chose the wrong one, you would go to right click that interpret footage main. And then here at the top where you've got your main options, we want to choose pre multiplied in this scenario. Okay. So now I'm going to create a new composition by just grabbing my backdrop JPEG onto my create new composition button. And then I'm going to grab my shot one and drop that on top. So you can see that brought in my ship and my shadow. So let's just see what happens if I start trying to color correct this. I'll go to window, add my effects and presets panel, and I'm gonna use the individual levels. And I'll just show you really quickly if I go in here and start trying to say, I want this to be more blue, it's going to make the whole thing more blue. Now the shadow actually starts to look pretty good, but this looks a little too much. So obviously that's not going to work. So we need to come in and grab our buffer right here and pull this onto our timeline as well. And now what I'm going to do is use my track mat to cut away uh, the ship and the shadow two different times. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna to toggle my switches and modes so you can see those track mats. And basically I want to have the buffer on top of the shot. So it's gonna look just like this. And where I, I have my track mat column, I'm gonna come in here and choose Luma Mat. And you can see that cuts away the shadow and we're left with the ship. So I'm gonna shift select both of those layers and hit Control Shift C and we're gonna pre-comp it and call it ship because that's just going to be easier to deal with one layer that's got all the track mat stuff going on. Now I'm going to bring both of those clips, those pieces of footage back in. I'm just control clicking there onto my timeline and I want this to go the other way here. So I've got the buffer on top, the shot, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the ship for a moment. And now we want to change our track mat uh, again, but instead of choosing Luma Mat, I'm going to choose Luma Inverted Mat. So now we get the shadow. And then we can do the same thing again where we shift select both of these, hit Control Shift C, and we'll call this Shadow. Okay, so now when we have both the visibility of our shadow and our ship, you can see that we have much better control now over these individual pieces. Perfect. Okay, so now let's add our levels. And I'm just going to come in and make sure it's the individual controls. We'll go into our blue here. And where you have your blue output black, you can begin to color correct that. So this one, I'm kind of looking at the black areas kind of as a composite of this shot and say, need them to be a little bit more blue, but not too much. So right in there around 17. And then for my shadow, I'm going to add this also. But this one's going to need to be even more blue. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit more, maybe come into its um, opacity. So with that layer selected, hit the T key to bring up opacity, turn that down a little bit so I can still kind of see through the shadow, maybe even give it a blending mode. You could go in and maybe give it something like hard light that can help to kind of blend the background and the foreground together. And you can see that now looks much better than what we had before when this was just coming through with no color correction whatsoever. 
So that's a great way to be able to separate your shadow that you got with the Shadow Catcher plugin from your object. And you can add multiple object buffers. You don't just have to have that one object buffer. I could go in and set up different buffers or add that same compositing tag with buffer one selected to multiple objects um, and then catch all of their shadows and be able to color correct those. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can set that up, but this is just kind of a simple way if you've got one object to get this out really quickly um, and be able to isolate that shadow. Now be sure to check back to our blog for more free lessons on how to do other little tips and tricks such as these.